Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco and welcome to approval tests in Python. In this video, we are going to do a getting started using the starter project. I'm going to do it in four sections. First, we're going to get it up and working and that might be all you need. But if you're new to approvals, we're then going to go through the basics of approval tests. And then we're going to spend a little section on the reporters, which is something very unique to approval tests. And then finally, at the very end of the video, I'm going to go through all the assumptions in case you have any problems and you need to do some troubleshooting. These are the things I'm sort of assuming are on your system and how to get them if they're not. So let's jump into it. Uh, first of all, why would you even want to use the starter project? This is usually for new code. It has a lot of benefits. It has continuous integration. It has project structures, requirements, talks, just a lot of sort of standard stuff you want to have a well-running Python project. All sort of set up for you. So here it is on GitHub. And if you're used to GitHub, you can just hit the use this template and it will clone this repo and you're good to go. But I'm gonna assume you're not used to GitHub at the moment. So we're gonna take a slightly simpler version and go to this code and we're gonna download the zip. That's gonna download a zip of your code and it's downloading right here to my downloads. I can right click on it and extract everything. And I'm gonna do that just right here. And so here you can see all that code extracted. The next thing I need to do is open it in an editor. And I'm gonna use PyCharm here because it brings a lot of advantages for Python. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up PyCharm. And if you've used PyCharm before, it might start in a previous package, which is not really what I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say close project. And that will start as if I've never opened a project. So now I'm gonna say open, and I am going to go to the folder that I opened or that I downloaded it to. In this case, it's user administrator downloads. And then the project. And I actually have to go one directory underneath that again. It's going to ask me if I trust the project. I, I do. So I'm going to say yes. And then you will see that it says creating virtual environment. If you do not see this, it's because you open the directory at the wrong level, either too far down or too far up. I'm going to say OK. And then you're going to focus on the bottom bar. So PyCharm is actually doing quite a lot of little things because this project follows a lot of standard protocols for Python. PyCharm understands those and therefore installs the packages, sets up the virtual environment, does some indexing, lots of little things. And, but this will take a bit of time. Once it's done, we should then be able to open up the test samples. So just to give a quick project structure, you have your main project, you have your project. This is where you would put your actual production code. And then you have your tests. This is where you put your test code. And you can see it already has some sample tests here. When I click to open this up, you can see here these little green bars. This meant that your environment got set up correctly and I can actually run my tests here. I'm going to run my tests here and this is going to open up and run all the tests that are in this class sample tests, which are not actually all the tests inside of here. I can run individual ones by running here. So you, here you can see it just did one test. But there is also this test pi test, which is the way pi test done it. And to do that, I can run here. If I want to run both the pi test and the unit test test, I can right click on the file itself and say run all the tests in the file. You can see here I got seven tests or I could right test click on the folder itself and say run everything in the folder also giving me seven tests. That's our project up and working. Now let's go look at some of the basics of approvals. The first thing you will notice is that these tests only give the result. They do not give the expected result. The expected result is in a file near it. So you can see here, this is in the class sample tests. 
test with approvals is the name of the method. And so here, sample test, test with approvals, dot approve dot text. And if I open it up here, you'll see this welcome to approvals. If I change this, if I was to say welcome to approvals today and run it, it will fail. And two things will happen when it fails. The first is it's going to open another program. In this case, it's opening uh, Beyond Compare, which is a very nice diff tool. Uh, we'll get into diff tools later in section three. Here you can see over on the right hand side, sample test dot test with approvals dot receive dot text. And on the left hand side, sample test dot test with approvals dot approve dot text. That's the expected. This is the actual. If I like the actual, one of the ways that I can approve this file is simply by copying this over. I'm going to save it, close it. And now when I run it, it will pass. One thing to notice is when the tests pass, they do not open the reporters because it would be really quite annoying if you had 900 tests and all of a sudden 900 windows started opening. You really only want to see this information on failure. By the way, that's not the only way you could do it. If I was to change this to now and run it, it would still fail. It will still open the reporter. But what I could do is I could look over here and say, oh, here's the received, here's the approved. I'm going to delete the approved file and I am going to rename the receive file from dot received to dot approved. This is another way of approving a file. And when I run this, you will see the test now pass. So we've talked about the fact that approval test doesn't take the expected. It stores it in a file, which usually you get by copying the result. Uh, we've talked about the file names to hold these files. We've talked about the diff tools that open when the tests fail. But one thing we haven't mentioned is how do we visualize these results? And approval test cares a lot about being able to take some data and visualize it. Um, a very common way to do this is to write your own kind of string, taking your code and putting it in a string. But you might also want to use JSON to do it. Here on line 35, we have a sample where we take an object and we just say verify as JSON and it takes it and turns it into JSON. It's a very convenient way of visualizing the structure and data of an object. And then finally, if you do get stuck, there are quite a lot of good documentation around approval tests. If you just go to approvaltest.com and click on the language of your choice, in this case, Python, and then scroll down, to the documentation, you will see quite a lot of things. And most of those things will include actual code samples. These code samples always have a snippet source, which will take you to the actual part of this code in context. So if you're ever like, well, I know that, but what did you import to use it? You can find that at the top of this file or any other context that you might be missing. So pay attention to the documentation. It can be really helpful. Finally, I want to talk about the diff tools. So we mentioned that this is opening uh, Beyond Compare. On this computer, I have Beyond Compare 4 set up. Now, Beyond Compare is an excellent diff tool, but it is a paid diff tool. And so we have some suggestions on diff tools to use if you don't already have one on your system. You can find those suggestions in the documentation for approval test starter project. Um, almost any diff tool will work and approval test will search your system to find the one by default, but you can also specify these specifically. If you look in your test, you'll see a specific test which shows how to use options and set the reporter that you care about. And there's a whole variety of those, and it is easy to create your own if you have specific tools you want to use that we haven't included, or you have them installed in locations that are not typical. 
So finally, let's talk about the assumptions. What am I assuming is on your computer to be able to do this? Well, I'm expecting you to have a Python environment that works. In this case, we have both pip and we have Python 3. I'm expecting you to have an editor. In this case, we're using PyCharm. And I'm expecting you to have a diff tool. As mentioned before, I'm using beyond compare here. But you can use any one of the diff tools. If you want to see the specific way that we are setting it up on this machine, which is from zero on an AWS clean machine, we use a PowerShell script to do that. You'll notice this is quite empty. It runs this line of code that sets up the basic windows. It then sets up the basic Python and PyCharm, and then it clones the repo. If you open up these files, you can see what they do. In this case, to set up Python and PyCharm, we are using something called Chocolatey, which is a command line installer, to add beyond compare, Python, pip, and PyCharm. If we want to see what is up in the standard Windows machine, we can open that as well. And this one is a little more complex. This first part is installing uh, Chocolatey itself. It's setting some things that force uh, administrator and also make a Windows server act a little more like a Windows desktop. Um, we then uh, install some standard stuff for Git, some standard tools that most developers enjoy. We install some stuff for VS Code. For again, just most developers would enjoy. We install some timing tools to allow you to work as a mob or ensemble. Uh, we open up some mind map tools to help with retrospectives. And we set up your taskbar so that the computer is easy to use. And that's all I have for you starting on your journey with approval tests. I invite you to play around with it, enjoy it. There are other videos, uh, some in Python, but other languages as well. You can watch it in most languages. The techniques of approval tests are rather language agnostic. And finally, if you enjoy this and are having some things you'd like improved in approval tests, we standardly get together once a week to mob together. And there's an open invitation to that session. You can find details on the approval test page, and I'd love to see you there. Thank you very much. I'm Llewellyn Falco, and I approve this video.